mic check. Can you see me? Can you hear me? I'm seeing something weird. I don't know if the internet's unstable. Tell. And it's dispatching live. It's Thursday. It's approximately noon central time. And so that means we're back. We're going to check the load boards. We're going to look for loads. Put in your route, Scout. We want to help you, whether you're a dispatcher, carrier, other things you can do wrong. So we want to help make sure that it doesn't go bad, right? So do it for advice. I see it in the live chat. Thank you for joining the live chat, by the way. Say hello, ask a question, and, and thanks for joining us. And also, mic check one, two, three. I want to make sure the mic and the sound is okay because um, we had some craziness on Tuesday night. And But you, if you go back, you won't see the beginning of that show because the audio was messed up. So let me know. And yeah, I'm seeing, man, I don't know. <laughs> I, my preview screen over here is going crazy. Um, so I don't know. I think we're live. If we are live and you can see me and hear me, please. Sue, can you hey, see Jay. me and hear me? Hey. I don't know if my internet's going crazy. You're on my phone too, so it's working as far as I can tell. All right. Okay. All right. So I think we're okay. Okay, good. All right, good. Well, then, everybody, welcome back to uh, Dispatching Live. Sue, if you want to go ahead and share your screen, let's take a look and see. I don't know. I don't. We don't have any route scouts yet. So. And you know right. what? And I can see it. So I'm looking over here. Oh. Yes, it is. It's buffering. Is your screen buffering? It is. Um, I'm on my phone. You're going in circles. Yes, right yeah, now. Yeah, okay. I'm going, <laughs> so. in, I'm going in circles. But can can you hear me? I'm just yep. physically going in circles, but not mentally. See, I don't have my sound up. Let me turn it up. Let me see. I don't know if anybody else is here. I don't think I've seen the internet get rocked like this. I don't know. I, I thought everything was fine. <laughs> everything was fine. Right before the show, everything was fine. So now i mean yeah it's still just buffering i don't buffering. Uh, does anybody else having a problem can they oh, hear now Jake? It's okay I pull, I, it's not now it might be live it's just that we've got the the normal delay working out oh, recently. there we go okay yep i got sound now and we're back okay <laughs> and we're back you know thank you for your right. patience <laughs> i hate it too um and so you know what i do when something ha like that happens is i go i go right you know i'll scan three articles and then come back so if you're just joining us now because you scanned three articles because you couldn't stand watching the buffering welcome back thanks for doing that i appreciate that <laughs> and uh go ahead and give a little applause okay so how many loads hey. do we have on central right now or it's 49,100, quite okay. a bit still. I don't think it's changed a whole lot I, um, from what it was the last couple of weeks. And I think part of it is from the weather that we had. I mean, it stopped a lot of the transportation and probably a lot of the buying too, because places were cold, so, closed. So I think it's bulked up, which, I mean, that's great. You don't very often see that this, we have this many the average that we see on a regular basis is anywhere between 17,000 to 20,000 loads now there is more on there if you put in there over 60 days I have three days up because I don't work that far out in advance it's almost impossible to do so we're at 49 100 right now yeah so do you know what's so um, interesting is that for uh, in other parts of the world they see 49,000 loads as a problem because the rates creep up and they're like, oh, man, mm -hmm. you know, we got to pay like transporters again. Oh, <laughs> God. that's the only time we get really good races because there's so many loads on the board right? that we can choose and pick what we want. So it makes them raise the prices. I had a guy ask me the other day why it was so high. And I said, because there are so many loads on the board, they get to pick what they want. Why are the, and, 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 and what, you know what I say? And I, I don't think anybody listens to me, but I'm like, the rates are not high. They're normal again. Yes. Yeah. They're where they're supposed to this be. This whole period. idea that, that you know, living on red loads. No, man, that's, yeah. that's not right. No. Red loads is not normal. No. No, red loads shouldn't even be allowed on there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, man. I got to pay the yeah. transporter on this one? That sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do you guys know what I'm saying? I mean, did, does anybody know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, between fuel, insurance, the DOT, the yeah. fact that you are running a business and you need to turn a profit, all of that. Yes. Oh, man. That part yes. 
can't believe it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yep. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm going to try and get All it back right. together. Let's get well, back on track. Okay. So, um, <laughs> I'm looking. Did, did anybody put a route search in the uh, in the live I, chat? I don't think so. Oh, and I, you know what? I didn't even say hello. Number one, Sue, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing fine. How about you? It's better. So yeah, I'm good. <laughs> I'm doing all right. You know, honestly, just seeing the sun again is like a yeah. great first step, right? Okay. Yes. So I can see it's the been sun. It's nice and warm. Yes. Okay, yeah. great. Second step. I can see the sun. It's feeling warm. Now, if I if there's any way, I, I'm jealous of Texas and Mississippi because I would love to see people not wearing masks. Um, but you know, yeah, you know that. What I mean? yes, I agree. I, yes. I, and now that I said that, like, I'm about to get, like, I'm going to get dog piled. How, how dare you say that? Well, I'm just saying as a human, one human being to other human beings, assuming there's still other human beings out there. I'm kidding. Uh, that I'd love to not see masks, but I know it's part of where we are. It's 2021 or 2020. Don't you love, I tell you, don't you love it when people said, I'm so glad 2020 is over. I'm like, uh, if you Why? just turned the a calendar same. page, the it's the same thing. Yeah. It might be worse. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Oh, okay. I, I was talking to a guy at ready auto the other day and he was saying the same thing and i'm like i said well this is basically our new norm is masks and i said so we might as well just get used to it because i think it's just going to continue i mean i wish it wasn't either because i don't like wearing masks i'm sure a lot of people don't and then you have a, little, a lot of people who are like want to wear two masks or three masks so it's kind of like you know what do you do i want to live my life again That's oh the way I feel man about well it. you know what and i what i hate is then i head into the grocery store and i forgot all three of my masks all right let's get back to work yeah. Yeah, um, and yeah. let's uh, go. I'm gonna say hello in the live chat. We've got um, all right. So yeah, Ty was in here. He says he loves you. Uh, Carlos yeah. Braxton, <laughs> ACP Logistics, that. Two Bears Transportation hey, is here. Reese is here. Thank what's up, Reese? Natasha, what's up, Natasha? Thanks for letting me know that I was buffering. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. The 1080 Phantom, Alex from Vita Cars. Oh, cool. That's awesome. Haven't seen Alex for a while. Thanks for tuning in, buddy. Chris Chamberlain is here. Hello, everyone. Sue, thanks again for putting me in touch with one of your drivers. Oh, that was cool. Definitely helped with equipment choice and transport business. Yeah, the more people you can talk to, the better. Um, allegedly. Fritz Duval says, what's up? Oh, good. The sound is good. The video is good. Nothing's going crazy. You know, Fritz, I'll just, just between me and you, Fritz, I had to cut off the four, first 43 minutes of the show from Tuesday night, I just lopped it right off. Can't even, wow. it's gone. It was just, the audio was so bad. And thank you for letting me know. So again, everybody out there in TV land, if the video or the audio sucks or, you know, something, yeah, please let me know right away. Cause I just, it was so loud. I couldn't stand it. All right, let's move on. We got Maryland, Ohio three pack. Yep. Okay. Yep. I pulled it awesome. up. She's already pulled it up. I he won. I, he... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He wants a three pack. I just put up Maryland to Ohio period. So we're going to kind of scroll and see what's on here. Nice. Instead, because I have a feeling if I put up three pack, we're not going to find it. All right. So, and I'm assuming does he doesn't care where at in Ohio, but we're going to try to go to the same, like we're either going to go to all the Columbus. We're going to all go to Cincinnati or all to Cleveland. Something to that effect is what I'm thinking. Right. Pro tip. Where if is your driver Houston? just says something like Maryland, Ohio, use your best judgment until you talk again. And don't wait. Don't sit at your desk waiting to hear back. Like, oh, well, I got to hear back before. No, start your search. I'm going to look this up. RCG has several pack. Well, they're not packs. They're listed individually, but they're all at the same place. Looks like at Copart. But I don't know where Harrisville, Ohio is. Okay, so it's before you get into Columbus. So if you took these, you'd have three choices to choose from. If you wanted to pick up, you could do like Akron area, you could do Pittsburgh, or you could do Columbus. I don't think they're paying that great. So honestly, I wouldn't do these for 220 a car. I know it's 66 cents a mile and they're all in the thing, but look how far you're going to have to drive to go. Oh, sorry, wrong one. Okay, so this is Harrisville. So you're either going to backtrack to Pittsburgh, which, by the way, is not a bad thing because Pittsburgh pays very, very well. Um, or you're going to have to drive 127 miles to Columbus. And then I guarantee you going up to further past the point of where you're going to drop, 
that money has got to pay you enough to get you there or backtrack. Um, and I really don't think that's, what do you think, Jay? I don't think that's very good money. Well, they got to a be lot honest, I was focused on the audio. <laughs> So, oh, sorry. Um, but okay, no, well, I don't think they're very but, good money. <laughs> well, no, here's, here's, I, I will, I will tell you this because this, I'm such a skeptic. I'm a pessimist and the skeptic and all that stuff. I, I have a, I have a, I have a pretty sunny disposition, but I don't trust anything. Mm -hmm. So weird mix. Right. So when I see all this posted by RCG, go back up. Like what is going on? Like I would actually call RCG. Part. They do this, this all the time. Yeah. But why? They just listed all this stuff right now. They got all... Anyways, what my gut tells me, call RCG and get the lowdown rather than guessing, you know, if you're interested, if you're anywhere near Brandywine. Yeah. That's well, they I'm do thinking. this all the time. So I'm used to RCG listing them like this. Okay. Brandywine is Copart or IA, one of the two. I can't remember right off the top of my head. But um, they list them individually. I don't know why they don't list them into packs, but they don't. Um, Interesting. But, they, they, pro um, they probably... Okay, I'm speculating live, but don't they make more money? No, actually, they would save more money doing the packs. Yeah, why is that? Yes. I don't know because, you know, like Central charges you so much to have so many listings, right? Right. Which we've discussed before. Yeah. And the more listings you do a month, the more you pay, obviously. <laughs> and um, I would do them in three packs, four packs, five packs. And then if you had to split them up, split them up. But I'm not sure. They do this all the time, though. Well, I could, see them list them like this all the time. Do they have unlimited? I mean, the RCG moves a lot of cars. Do you think they have an unlimited account? Well, let me see. What is the unlimited account? Let me go. <laughs> Probably <laughs> four billion. Uh, That's I'm just four I billion. I looked it up the kidder. last time, and it was like it was like five or five hundred dollars a month. Maybe it's more than that. Hold on. Um, well, that's the the beauty of being really good as a broker is, you know, Fat Stacks LLC. <laughs> that's it. Come on, Let's that's not, can't be true. Edit. Let's see. These are our options. Holy crap! Okay, it's worse than <laughs> I remembered. It. Okay. <laughs> that All was right. right. All right. So here we here's where we're at. Five hundred posts is three eighty nine ninety five. Twenty five hundred posts is seven forty nine ninety five. Ten show the screen. Posts are can you can you show the screen? Yeah, hang on. I don't want to see it. Switch. Okay, so okay, this is what it is. Wow, it's three thousand dollars a month for unlimited posts. Wow! <laughs> wow. Holy crap! Holy holy mackerel. crap! <laughs> three grand a month for unlimited <laughs> posts as a broker. It's a thousand a month for a ten thousand posts. Holy so the big boys, cow. don't you think the big boys have got to be paying that three grand? Like Metro's got to be paying that three grand. Um, United Road's got to be paying that. I mean, I know we were talking to them the other day, right? And you're like, <laughs> we can get a discount. I mean, <laughs> I, I, mean? Yeah. I, I think Fat Stacks LLC might be an understatement. We're talking about hauling in <laughs> cash. Of course. Yes. Yeah. Wow, we were figuring, amazing. we were figuring at even. $130 a month, how many people, and we're way under what we thought they were making. Right? We, yeah, seriously? We that, okay, so wait a we minute. We have to be. So if you're, if, okay, so we added up the carriers, what is it, like 10,000 plus carriers a month at 120 mm -hmm. a month. So that's a million a month just on carriers. What are they hauling in on right, brokers? that's about the brokers. Holy yeah. cow. I see, I usually pay the, wow. I usually pay the 130 a month. This was and, really um, then I have you have to go up. I'm gonna need a yeah. moment. That is intense. How much <laughs> money are they making? So wait, how, how, yeah, really? Whoa. You want to go back? Are you guys shocked? <laughs> is anybody? Is, is it just me? <laughs> like, yeah, Natasha's like, oh wow, like, get the, yeah, yeah. No, that's wait, a lot. Uh, and, I, and listen, I know so, we all listen. We all just, fan. yeah. <laughs> maybe they're paying the unlimited so it doesn't matter how they list them <laughs> so, but here's what, so here's what here's, but here's what here's what i'm trying to figure out okay let's say it's three grand a month for unlimited yeah how much extra work how much extra burden is on your network is that like oh. 2800 profit like how much extra work did anybody have to do nothing i wouldn't <laughs> think they'd have to do anything i mean do you know what i'm saying like it's set up 
Yeah. Did you have to hire I an extra was... army of plumbers to work on the pipes? And <laughs> I don't. Wow. Mm. Oh wow. Okay. Well, you know, uh, this is America. All right. And if you can, <laughs> and if you can charge it, and someone will pay it. And pay it, then there you go. All That's right. There it goes. There you go, Betsy Ross. All right. Okay. So Fritz says they call him direct all the time and they're cheap rates. I agree. I, they're usually cheaper than 66 cents a mile is what I usually see him on there is less than that. But so wholesale has a good one going to Cincinnati though, out of Laurel. And we probably need to talk about wholesale for just a second. I like it. And, and now, and wait now, um, right. Cool your jets, <laughs> right. We're going to go with information. So, okay. All right. Yes. Here here's go. some information that's going on with wholesale. They are three weeks behind on paying people. Ooh. And they will tell you that when you call to get the load. They will tell you that. So just okay. keep that in mind for your fundage. You know, you're not going to be expecting it. In all reality, we've been. it's been taking us a month to get paid. Wow. The last two people has been a month. That's so, on everything. Um, I don't you know, know what's going on. Uh, it, the, it, yeah. Mm. So... That you have to keep that in mind for, you know, if you're counting on money, you're going to want to factor that. If you don't have a factoring company, then you got to realize it's going to take a minute to get paid. Um, and also keep in mind, it once you factor a company, you always have to factor them. So my problem has been with this is we usually get, you know, ACH from wholesale within two days. So none of my guys have factored it. And I don't know whether to factor it. You know what I mean? Because I'm, I'm worried for two counts. When companies get this far behind, it's a scary situation because you don't know what's going on. Um, we've had it happen where companies got this far behind and they went out of business. Um, I'm not you, saying that because I know wholesale's got a huge, you, that's like mainly what you're hauling are their cars. So I don't think the that's words, the issue. You took the words yeah. right out of my mouth. Because actually, if it's their own inventory, like they're not mm -hmm. waiting, no, what, like no. mm -hmm. what, who, what are they waiting on? Who are they waiting on to get yeah. paid, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know if it's a money thing or if they don't have the staff. Um, I will say that every time we call, usually you email wholesale to find out where your money is. And we've late responses and no phone calls and stuff like that. So it may be a staff situation. Nobody's really found out. I can tell you how you could find out. You could call the broker bond and you could find out. So I wanna They'll see, tell you. And we, well, if, listen, if there's an we issue. are, we're, and we are, uh, I, I would, I would like to say that I think that we are, we're, we're an open forum here. So if you, it, listen, if you, if yes. you're at wholesale and you want to clarify yeah. that, you Let are welcome know. to do that. Yeah. This is not, none of this yeah. is, you know. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just things that we're just trying to share, especially if you're a new company. Yeah. And if you're a new ah, company and you're hey, depending bold, on a certain amount of income. Look at this. Bold Auto Logistics says they said they're short on staff. That's. You know that's cool, okay. man. That and that. So there we go. Yeah. Now there's just that information. Helps. Okay. There you go. Cool. It's not a yes. money problem. It's a staff. The problem. other part is, <clears throat> yes. And see, I did. I wasn't sure if it'd be a money problem just because a lot of their stuff is their own product, shall we say? And right. that's usually not going to be an issue. If they were like, what happened to that company when Carmax so, didn't pay them the million five and they went out of business? Okay. It's not right. nothing like that. Exactly. But. Right. There was that company. I think that was yeah. Autotransport.com. Was yes, it? it was. And then there yes, was. Yes, and they'd been in business like their grandfather had built it, and they it totally demolished it. I know, man. So yeah, that was terrible. Was and then there was uh, dependable auto shippers. Now that's the that's the classic case. They just kept getting further and further and further behind. Where yeah, what's that statement? Where your something can't cash the checks or whatever? Oh, yeah. your ass can't cash the checks. What? Something like that. <laughs> Yeah, but oh, oh whoops! I was trying whoops. to get out, of not saying that. But also, <laughs> it's, it's hard to get a hold of everyone nowadays through the phone. Yeah, well, no, absolutely. It, it, it man, the phone. They don't is want to answer, and that's why. Yeah. It's and really I'll be honest with you, we we're doing more emailing now to accounting than we ever have ever. You might as well not even bother calling anymore oh you call, yeah. just plan on emailing actually calling yeah. you know what you you probably know this too if you ever have to call compliance or accounting yeah have some snacks ready would you be okay to go up to yeah because um Crickets. i mean the world's changing let's just put it that way well Everybody. that's and why honestly, i think a lot of people are working at home probably that and might that, be why too. and that's why if i don't want a system where you can only click buttons but I don't want a system right. where there's no buttons you can click. I want 
I want True. buttons and phone numbers and email addresses and bow ties yes. and buttons and muttons and whatever that is. Okay, should we get back on? We still searching for. <laughs> yes, let's go back on track. Okay, so okay. anyways, wholesale. I love the company. I just they're running behind. But let's just keep that in mind when you're getting loads. Um, all right, so that's a good paying load. That's eighty four cents a mile. Let's see if there's anything else going to Cincinnati. It is one hundred. Uh, and it looks like Backlot Cars has a couple out of Baltimore going to Parma and Cleveland, which would be the same as hey, too, which isn't a, those aren't bad rates either. Note: Car Global is loving Backlot Cars. So um, I love backlog cars too. You know what? They, backlog cars is a they, Cinderella for now. So yeah, man, go with it. They pay well and they pay on time. They pay um, once a week. I think it's every Thursday. As long as you get your stuff in before then, they'll pay you that same week. Although other than that, you get paid the following week if it comes in after the fact. Um, so yeah, I agree. I love them too. I haul a lot of cars for them. Let's see. Here's another one here. ACB has one here going from the Baltimore area to Cleveland as well. I'm not seeing any three packs, though, honestly, other than those other ones we just saw. There's plenty of stuff going to Cleveland on here, though. Oh, but here's a three pack. A place. OK, but they're not they're probably not a three pack. Let's see. They're high roof cargo vans. I don't know, Fritz, unless you got a flatbed. I don't know if you're going to carry those. Um, I like the information, it, though. And look at that. Let's Twit see. card not required. That's cool. Yeah. Because I see Curtis Bay. That is so smart. Every time I see Curtis Bay or Towson, right, I'm like, Twick. Mm -hmm. Good job. Nice yeah, posting. Thinking that is yeah. awesome. Now, it's possible. <clears throat> Dang, look at all you that could information. Take, like, Pick up 24-7. Yeah. yeah, and that's handy, too. I like that. If you could fit those, I would do that. I don't have a three car over in that area that could fit anything like that. Now, he could take these two and go with two and get out of there. But um, other than that, it looks like that's several two packs, too. Now, hey, look, at, let's look at the money. Oh, that's two. Okay, yeah, that's a dollar a mile. Okay, good. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, that if you're a three car and you're getting $2 a mile, that's good. That's usually what I try to get all my three cars. Yeah. And, and, you know, sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. It just depends on what's going on. Um. Here's a two pack out of Elkridge, but if anybody knows Elkridge, you don't want to go there. It is a, yeah, yeah a B I T C H to get out of there. What um, is finding what, cars? What's up with Elkridge? A, well, the, it's the Mannheim there, and oh, it's, it's horrible. It's so huge. They don't know where anything is at. Do I they mean, have I've had people look. No, nah, I don't think so. Um, Let me go look. Yeah, I let's go check it. that. You guys know about Lot Vision? Pro tip: Lot Vision. It's the technology that helps you find your cars faster at the Mannheim, and it should be everywhere. But, uh, you know, it takes time yeah. to implement, so they're, they're working on it. So you go to this site, you go to mymannheim.com forward slash lot vision, and uh, check it out. And you scroll down and find your auctions, and this is where, yep, it's coming. Mannheim, Baltimore, Washington, coming soon. They need it, like, badly. It's horrible. These are all the other ones. And then, like, if you look on here, you'll see the other one. There's Nevada's coming soon. They have Mannheim PA on here now, too, though. See that? That would be lovely. Phoenix is coming soon, and that's it. But we, I mean, they've added so many to this list. I was just going to say that over the is, last year. That's impressive. I think we started with like three or four before. So, yeah, this is. Hey, amazing. that's where all the money's okay. going. <laughs> that's why they need to charge that much hey <laughs> yeah well i'm it's sure like... those little things that go in the cars are expensive and then they got to set it up you know what i mean and not forget to take them out of the car <laughs> oh <laughs> but leave. oh but wait but wait have you seen all the brands that cox has they have like everything so it could be coming b auto they got money man seriously to count the money in that vault i'll take it that works for me yeah I'd Although like they got a huge, that. I mean, you know how many people that Cox Automotive employs nationwide? I would love no, to see many, that do number. I, I don't know. I'm going to guess. I mean, it's it's a over a thousand. A it's got to be 5,000, 10,000. Yeah, well, yeah, it's a if you lot figure, of people, man. So many. It's Ready people. Auto, it's Mannheim, it's Central Dispatch. Well, Central Dispatch probably only has four or five people, so that doesn't okay. count. But, um, I mean, go Ready to Cox Auto. Auto do, sure. Well, I don't want to side. 
we'll do that if we have time we'll go to the if, if you're still here yeah. at the end of the show we'll go to cox <laughs> auto inc if you haven't fallen yeah. asleep we'll go to cox auto inc we'll take a look at that let's guess let's play a game how many employees oh. um all right so there's these are the same vehicle these are double brokered um as usual let's see there's always certain brokers. Which ones are <laughs> which ones are double brokers? It's yellow fin, yeah. yellow fin and elite little, and yellow right fin. There. Yeah, they're Good typical time. for this stuff. We should yeah. have like a, um, what's that rock'em sock'em robots or they have like the battle wraps. We should keep track of the double listed brokers and make like a bracketed competition. Yes. Sounds like well, fun. and honestly, if you're a new dispatcher, you kind of need to know what brokers do what. I Julissa was saying something the other day. She's she's a new dispatcher for me, and she says it's hard for us to know when you're looking at these load boards and you they don't always understand that that's a double brokerage. But if you know the person to look for, I mean, I hate to say it, the broker to look for, then you will know what's what. <laughs> Does that make sense? It, You'll see that this is double brokered. Did you I just sh share? Do I need to share screen? I, again, I just or? took the oh, screen. Okay, yeah, good. I had to share. I so this is when when you know it's double listed. This is the office. <laughs> 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 now, yep. Now True. I made up the caption. Thank you, Carolina Logistics. I thought it's a great picture. I was stared at it for quite a while, because you know, like yeah, right. What it? What are they laughing at? Is what I was really thinking. Like, <laughs> you know, I, I just, you know, I just yeah. booked another load. Or are these brokers? Maybe this is what brokers look like. Laughing. <laughs> 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 ah, I got one over on you. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. so, it's so funny. I love this picture. It is so good. Oh, I'm not sure man. who Carolina Logistics are to you. I mean, that's a, I think that that should be a poster on the wall. Well done, Carolina Logistics. I, I think that is I think that is fantastic. Um, you were talking great? about what uh, brokers and carriers. You can go ahead and take your screen back over. But I know one of the things that I want to talk about, because you mentioned Julissa, is that we, yeah. we had a request the other night for um okay this is a really good request is there a list of brokers um that a mm -hmm. new carrier with a new mc with a new authority can book loads with mm -hmm. it's the opposite of a list of brokers with broker packets it's a list of brokers so right you just go with everybody that's not on the list that says no <laughs> that's what you go with because <laughs> almost okay. you know the one that the list that i have that tells you their requirements. So everybody else is free game usually. I've never had anybody else not on that list. Oh, also, everybody needs to know Ready Auto has stopped taking on new carriers. I just if read that. In, it got my attention. Ready has closed the yeah. gates. Really? Yep. Yeah, they've chose the Yep, yeah, they've closed the gates. Yep. Wow. So if you didn't get signed up, you're not getting signed up. And we knew it was coming. I, I, yeah. I mean, I'm surprised it stayed open as long as it did. Wow. Um, technically, it's almost been a year, right? They started opening up around March. I think that's when it was because wow. of COVID. Yeah. And I hate to say this. I don't want to say it like this, but they're probably yeah. going to have to open back up because of COVID again. Um, they're really? going to find that out. Well, I, yeah. I, I would, th I've said this before and, and I've been vocal. I'm, I, I, I'm still, I'm looking for someone to say, yeah, Jay, you're right. We just found out that ten percent of our list was no good, because you and I right. both know carriers come into business and they yep. go out of business and, and it's constant. Yep. So I don't yep. know how you manage a list of ten thousand carriers. I have no. I Can you imagine if how many people well, would it take to to figure out if you've got ten thousand actual carriers? Well, I would think okay because they also have code writers and stuff like this. I would think that you this ten thousand list. If their MC gets shut off or their insurance expires, it should automatically kick them up into a thing and say, okay, either they're no longer in business or we need to find out and then take them off the list. 
I mean, they're code writers. That's what they do. So I would think they'd have something like that in there, no. but they don't well, because I've had to give them the list of drivers before of who was still in business and who are not. That's And that's what I'm saying is that I know, and those, listen, we know like Assertus, Metrogistics, they have systems. You can go to SaferWeb. There are systems that can help you make it better. But I mean, right. if you're shutting off gates, you're positive, you're good to go. And I don't know of that that's the black mirror side of all i don't think that's not the world that i know here's what's so weird you you talk to dealers and auctions and like yeah we need we need more carriers really because all the carriers are like man we need less carriers right yeah it, See, I, and I then you have companies like yeah there's a driver you? shortage and everybody's standing around at the truck stop in the home depot going what are you talking about i'm surrounded by drivers yeah Right. It's the weirdest yeah. thing. I, in fact, I just got I just got an email from Ready Auto asking them asking me to give them a quote on the load to haul for them. So if you're asking people, right, and also we've been getting phone calls from them. I think we got two phone calls today for loads. If you're calling us for these loads, then you don't have enough carriers, right? That's the way I take it. Don't have enough carriers that'll take it cheap. That is now. Well, come no, on. That's what it is. <laughs> Well, you said bring, it, I didn't say it. I know, anyway. that brings us back to red loads. And Jay gets the red card, by the way. But, right. you know, the thing is that right. everybody's so used to red loads. Well, now I'm just going in circles. Um, but that is an amazing... Thanks for sharing that about Ready Auto. Also, let's see, Silverman, does Sue have a Rolodex full of direct customers? <laughs> well, now that, no, now that's proprietary um... information. <laughs> I mean, take it easy, <laughs> well, Eddie. Well, my direct customers are a little bit different. <laughs> like I said, I am a broker, yes. But I have, I don't have like a huge Rolodex of people. I just, my name gets passed out a lot. So, and I don't solicit brokerage, shall we say. Yeah. Just because my main business is dispatching. My side business is the brokering. Yeah. Um, so I usually have like a couple dealerships I deal with. And then I have a lot of individuals that are, they say they're dealerships, but they're really not where they buy cars and sell them up in New Jersey, Connecticut, that kind of thing in New York. Well, so I'm fairly busy without doing that. And <laughs> Ty, really Ty will tell you, if you've got a few good customers, you don't need another mm -hmm. 20. Like, they keep you right. busy. Yeah, you're right. So you only right. need a handful right. of good customers, which is again, the opposite of the load board on the load board. You need a jillion loads, right. but if you have customers, you only need a few. How funny is that? Um, Natasha right. says, do right. we avoid double brokerage? Sue? Well, we <laughs> let's see. It all depends. This is what I do with double brokering. Cause, and sometimes you'll see like quadruple brokering. They'll list <laughs> repeatedly. I, what I first do is I kind of depends on who the broker is. Cause I can tell you usually what some of them, if they're legit and some of them are not. Um, I will contact the one that's paying the most first and then work my way down. But here's the thing. If you finally do get the load and you always want to tell this broker, this is this person has it, this person that has it. And some of them do not care. Like and then there's some brokers who will say, oh, I'm not doing that. We're going to just take this shit off right now. OK, we're not playing this game. But the biggest concern you have with taking a car that's double brokering is, is somebody else showing up to pick up your car, even if you have verified it. Because I've had it happen. So what I do if I take a double broker load, other than telling the broker, you know, that it's listed with several other people, they contact the customer and tell them this stuff. I will, when I set up the pickup, I will say, okay, this is my company. This is who's picking it up. This is the only person who should pick it up. Now, sometimes they listen to you. And then most of the time they do not care. They're just like handing over the keys to whoever. Okay. So <laughs> it's kind of iffy. So just what I always do, if I do a double brokered load, I have a backup plan. I have an extra load <laughs> right. that I'm going to have that's, in my pocket. That's, I like how ultimately, no matter no matter your strategy on this, it's yeah. like, let's say, it's kind of like backup. when your baseball goes over the fence and there's a guard dog. Yeah. You, yeah. you know that there's a really good chance you'll never see that baseball again. There's a good right. chance, or at least not today. Right. So you're going to have a backup plan. Yeah. You're just in the back of your mind thinking, let's see, I think yeah. there might be a tennis ball under the bed, or maybe we can use a rock or, you know, so approach a double broker load that way. When you see a load, you know, it's the same year, same make, same model, same zip codes, different money, 
Like yeah. Delano? And, to, and, right. and, and I mean, it's always you, different money. It, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's always different money. Uh, just know yeah. that no matter what your strategy is going in, it, it, it you, you might be just totally wasting your time. But you yeah. learn, but it's a great yeah. learning experience too. It's just kind of like basic training when right. they dump the soldier into the water and he's chained and he, you know, it's right. like that. Yeah. It's like that. Yeah. How did I do? Yeah. Did well, we do and even right? and also okay. another one where you want to have a backup plan on is like, oh, it never fails if you have a residence car. <laughs> I always have a backup plan okay, for it wait. too. Because... It's like when you're dumped in the water and your or your arms are chained around your back. I got to tell you. <laughs> I'm pretty proud of that one. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it, wait, Silverman, right, any so... company that says you are preferred, you are getting screwed. Oh, that is funny. Oh, that is so funny. Yeah. Good one. Um, yeah, and because you have a preferred button on Central Dispatch, too, by the way. Oh, yeah. Com compare, <laughs> what's the name, your, what's the name of your carrier? Compare button LLC. Um, hey, let's, we got some more, we have several things to get through. Uh, no new numbers. Okay. You had a guy say, what, what, did, what did they do? They had a Penske truck and they, huh? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he sent, <laughs> we were trying to get him signed up with a new, um, with a broker. We'll just leave it at that. And you have to send pictures of the side of your truck with your logo, your MC, your DOT, and you know the trailer with the straps well he sent us over a picture because he rented a penske truck and there was nothing on the side and i was like um i'm pretty sure you have to have <laughs> you know all your information even if you're doing the magnetic sign which by the way is the truth you always have to have if you're a commercial vehicle you have to have this information on this both sides of your truck whether it be on your door or behind your door it's still going to be on your truck anyways he took off i guess this is what happened he sent us the pictures and we're like we can't use these why not and we're like, we have to have your information. And he didn't tell us that he had literally taken it off to take the pictures. And I'm like, no, put it back on <laughs> and leave yeah, it on. That was weird. So what, he yeah. took the sign off the truck for the pictures. Yes. yes. Why would you do that? I don't, he thought we wanted to see that it said Penske. I said, oh, no, I don't want it to see Penske at all. Cover that shit up. <laughs> oh, my God. That's really funny. I don't that's need when the you need that list of. That's why, the truck. Yeah. that's why you need the list of brokers that will take anybody. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Well, in the I'm, beginning, you know, it's really hard starting out when you can't um, haul oh, for all the big brokers. Oh, it's, you know, and, it's, and, you, it's, and you can't ask anybody any questions. Nope. And, you, and, you know, and that's why we always say it's you have to earn your stripes in this business because the first three to six months, you're earning your stripes, you're earning your ratings and building enough of experience to be able to haul for the bigger I brokers. I mean, that's just part of it. I mean, it's just like opening up a restaurant. you got to serve good food to get people to keep coming back in. But so the problem and, you know, is while time. you're earning your stripes, how much damage did you add to the annual increase in insurance rates? Oh, you mean like if you, you know what <laughs> if I'm saying? You're banging up cars that's left and right? We need yeah. to help. If people, they can't be stumbling around in the dark trying to transport cars and flipping trucks. That doesn't help the industry. Right. Right. So all those but jokes I mean, on Facebook, well, they're going to come back and haunt you. Hope you like an increase in insurance. Oh, yeah. oh you could have been helpful. Well, it was better to be funny. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just like this show. <laughs> Great, Jay. Great. <laughs> okay. Well, so Fritz, let's finish you up here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. Um, we're searching for loads. I, I mean, honestly, I would probably do those vans if you could do them. Um, that's what I would do. I just do a two pack of vans. I'm sure if he's a three car wedge, you can't do three. Um, if you're a three car flatbed, that's possible. I would have to ask how long the, how long they were, or you start with black lots. You do these two. Those are still pretty big. You're going to need a small one to go with that one. Um, definitely do not. I don't know if anybody knows Maryland. I know Fritz does, but you don't want to do Salisbury at all. Not unless you're picking them all up over there. Cause What's it's wrong with Salisbury. Um, I'll show you. <laughs> uh oh, yeah, they got some. Uh, is it the uh, like Pittsburgh? Is it the roadage or or? No, this is you're out on the island right here. Oh See? yes, yes. So you Wal don't want to. I think do of that. Waldorf, right? 
Isn't Waldorf well, out there? No, Waldorf is over here. No, oh, Waldorf okay. is over here, down in here. So but Salisbury. you have to go in this way or go out this way. And I'm not sure. Fritz probably knows better than I do, but my drivers refuse to go that way. Um, so, oh, 1080 Phantom says New Jersey to Florida is a killer lane right now. Really? Really? That's interesting. It is. It's not. Are they moving? They should have already snowbird out. New Jersey to Florida is a killer lane right now. Wow. Oh, Fritz says, well, yeah. try the bridge, Sue. Come on, Sue. There's a bridge. <laughs> I know there's a bridge. That's not the point. <laughs> it's way the hell over there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Unless I'm picking up three in that area, I'm not going over there. And neither will my drivers. <laughs> so Yeah, it, you do lose a lot of time, don't you? Yes. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, time is money in this business, especially with EDL laws. If it's costing you two, three hours to get across there, I know it's only 115 miles, but that can still take you that long. As we all know, Maryland traffic sucks. So, I mean, unless you've yeah, got all of them there, congested. it's, yeah. And really, can you, you can come back out. Like, if like, you're going to North Carolina, Virginia Beach, you could do that. I was that just going to say there. Virginia Beach. That's where it makes sense, doesn't it? Yes. This is, I think this one is the under, under the water one, isn't it, Jay? I think it is. There's one that goes under the water and I think it's this one. And I'm not sure what the toll is for that one, I but I saying, thought I'm it sure was like that's 40, quick. Bucks. Yeah. And I think it's expensive. A lot of my guys wouldn't do it. They'd rather go through this way, but you know, it all depends on what you want to do. Um, I'm curious about this whole New Jersey to Florida thing. Let's go look. Yeah. Let's I'm check really, this out. I'm, money, money, money. That's, the only like time it. it's busy like that is, fact, is uh, snowbird season. Anytime you so. share a great lane, you yeah, are ringing the cowbell. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Yeah. Let's go look. Oh, and I fixed my... Uh, Bay I Bridge fixed expensive it. It's toll. now yeah. Dispatula. So when you're ready, <laughs> get Dispatula. All right. So we got 150 loads. Let's look here. Five ninety five, not good. Forty two cents a mile for an in op, not good. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's always loads going to Florida, just so everybody knows, but not really hot loads, which we're talking like not fifty cents a mile. <laughs> um, there's one that's not that's sixty eight cents a mile, sixty seven cents a mile, sixty cents a mile. Um, that's paying good because it's going to Port Walton Beach, and that's not really Miami or anything like that. I'm not seeing like astronaut because you're on the this, panhandle. Okay, and this, I mean, okay, so <laughs> let's discuss this. This is a good uh -oh. paying load, but this is with <laughs> my favorite company yes. of all time. Their loads are not usually good, so I'm not counting that one. All right, next. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's it's unfortunate. I, I'm still trying to, I'm still trying to figure out how to parse sharing that information in a meaningful way. Yeah, I don't want to hurt yeah. anybody, but man, it's it's funny how true it is. Can be allegedly. Well, I know, keep wanting to make up a lady. list of of brokers, and I I do keep a, somewhat of a list on the list I sent out to people. And it will say, you know, these loads are, you can usually count on these people and you, you know, for loads and th these brokers don't count on them for it being good or even getting the load. And, and you know, that way. that's a funny thing, frankly, and I, here's, here, I'm going to, I'm going to wager. I'm definitely going to put, I'm going to put a few chips on this bet is that companies like that, they don't care what we're saying anyways. They don't watch. This, no. You know, they don't care. No. Come on. No. Let's be real. Well, there's one that would go with that Fort Walton Beach, this Tallahassee one. That's it's paying good, too. And it's by Atlantic City, where that other one is. Um, but really, I'm not, I'm seeing, I, I mean, who, Jacksonville, that's a good one. But everything else is mainly like, you know, 50 cents a mile and under. That's why I'm saying I haven't seen anything to make me, you know, Start, jump on the board and yeah like just spending florida. money yeah. and buying atvs and stuff well on top of it getting out of florida is going to be the, the right. bad part too. so but not that doesn't say, mean it's not real go, 1080 no, he, and, and he no, specified but, he she yeah 
Uh, yeah. 100 mile radius around Newark. So we're talking Newark-ish. Okay. To Florida. Well, we're kind of looking in that area right yeah. now. Yeah. That's, so that'd be Fairfield. That would be Fairlawn. I mean, that kind of stuff is Boy, around that area, but they're still not paying. See, see, what you have to look at this is if you're going to go to a state or a city or whatever that doesn't pay well, you've got to get paid really well to go into it. Because if you're going to take a hit both ways, it's not going to help you or, you know what I mean? You want good money. Like I'd want a dollar a mile going into Florida because I'm probably only going to get 40 cents a mile to come out kind of thing. You know, th that's, that's right. what I'm trying to say. That's right. I've got a lot of stuff out of Fairfield, which Fairfield is the auto auction. I believe it's Mannheim or Odessa. One of the and, two. And right. Um, it's all negotiable. Everything is negotiable. Anybody that says it's not absolutely. negotiable is negotiating. Yeah. And see, like, look at this. They've got, this is a limo. Most people oh, can't even take Oh, limos crack me up. Yeah. I yeah, think uh, once I've booked a limo, and I don't even think it went yes. well. Yeah. Well, and that's, it's a lot of people, like, when you're first starting out, you're thinking, oh, great, it's a limo, it's no big deal. But yeah. what happens is, like, especially on a wait wedge. Till that's right. Wait um, till you lo go to load that thing. You can't do it. Oh, you cannot my get, God. get it on yeah. there because it's, like, need... cracking it in half. Where it's, <laughs> exactly. Like, you're going to need, a like, little... a boat crane and a forklift. Yeah. Yeah. It's not going to help. No. So, um, let's see. And that's not enough money because essentially limo would be equal to two cars. So you're yeah, really only getting 30 Exactly. That mile. exactly limos blow. That thing's got to be four bucks yeah. a mile for me to look at it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and really, don't tell I me, think. And don't tell me you're not. That's what you charge that, when you're the limo driver yeah. and you're booking the, you know, the oh, yeah. party and yeah. yeah. Everybody cough it up, yeah. hauling cash. Yeah. But we want to go move it? Nah, red load. Well, see, even this enclosed, this enclosed one, it should be paying more than that. I mean, enclosed should be getting a dollar a mile minimum, and that's only at 87 cents a mile. And it's going to Pensacola, which this is my favorite place to vacation, but I don't know if most people would want to take load there because it's kind of hard to get out. Um, and you probably won't find a lot going that direction. I'm really just seeing 55, 50 gonna... cents a mile. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, there's plenty of stuff to get you down there. I am not disagreeing with you at all, but I'm not seeing fantastic rates. In fact, if we put in the gold bar dollar, I don't think even anything would come up right now. A couple of them here, like this one right here, but it's an in-op and it's a big van. Should be paying that way. It should be paying that anyway, so... Um, All right. Well, thank you so much. Right, exactly. It's an in-op Savannah. Um, got a yeah. good question here. A couple good questions. JD, yeah. is car transport and shipping seasonal? There are seasonal aspects to car shipping, which will affect, you know, what you can expect as a as a reasonable rate, uh, or rather, an expected rate. So a lot of times, what's expected isn't reasonable. That's why I've gotten mm -hmm. into calling things red loads because just right. just because people expect it to be cheap doesn't mean that's reasonable. Right. I mean right. you're not you're and, not moving and, avocados. And yeah. What seasonal. Would you say? Yeah. And and I don't know if you consider it seasonal. To me, it's not. You have a couple times a year what I call slow season. And I don't. I guess you could turn that into being seasonal, but not really because we still have to work. Seasonal means to me that you're not going to work during that time. And my guys always still work. You're just not going to get paid as much point. as you would during the high season. That's good and point. keep in mind what good I always point. tell everybody. So during the high season, when you're getting made, getting paid bank, you need to be putting away some of that money because for when the times that it's slow season, you have your little nest egg to lean on. I mean, it's the same with every business. You're going to have slow times and, and, you know, high season times restaurants do that, do it too. You know what I mean? So you still got to have a little nest egg to put away every time when it's when it's and, still out there. And whenever transporters do make extra money, man, do people moan and groan. I yeah. mean, it's moaning yeah. and groaning yeah. all day. How dare they? Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. So then that leads into yeah. Natasha says, what's a good load dollar per mile? You know, what's a good uh, benchmark on that? So she... She's saying like a bigger load. Is she, uh, Natasha, are you meaning like you took a multi-pack for $2 to $1.90 per mile? Because I don't 
you don't see two dollars a mile for one vehicle, so that's what I'm wondering. What you mean by that? Hey, and while we're uh, while we're getting clarification from her, we do have a couple other things we want to mention. You you had a thing about six thousand in fuel. Oh, Connecticut to <laughs> Connecticut to California. Yeah, so, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So, okay. So some transporters want to travel cross country. Okay, just so that they're driving more of the time than they are loading and unloading. I get it. Okay. But if you're a six, seven car hauler, shall we say, we'll just leave it at that. Um, and you're going from one coast to the next coast. No, it's in the trailer. Um, um, you cannot. Okay. So those loads usually pay 33, there's a 35 cents a mile. And you're going to pick up in six places, seven places. You're very, you're rarely going to come across two packs, three packs, anything like that. If they do, they're going to pay even less. So, for example, I ran the miles for how many miles it was and what the gas per mile you're getting for a big rig, right? Which is what, three to four miles to, for the gallon usually? I figured out it was going to run them almost $6,000 in fuel to go there and back. And if you're only going to make $10,000 and it takes you anywhere from seven to 10 days, and your profit after fuel is wow. 4000 that's not even true profit, wow. right? That because that doesn't include your expenses for while you're on the road, your right. tolls, oh my gosh. your insurance, your payments. To me, that's not enough money. To me, Actually, it, you should be even. doing especially you're breaking yeah, even. Yeah, you're, wow. if you're lucky. That sucks. Because what if your payment on your truck is X? You know what I mean? You got to filter it out. Like if your payment's a thousand dollars a month, you're not paying a thousand dollars on that one trip. You're gonna, you know, it's two fifty per week, shall we say? So you got to know your numbers to know whether it's worth doing or not. And but if you got to pay people like a driver for that too, they're not going to do it for just a thousand dollars. You know what I mean? So to me, that's not worth doing. Um, if you were a nine ten car hauler and you were doing that, I could probably see it a little bit more. But you're still going to be picking up in nine ten places. And same thing with when you get to California, we all know what the rates are there. They suck. They're going to be worse than coming out of Connecticut and Massachusetts going the long haul. We we've done this how many times? You're going to be lucky to get what? You're not going to get no thousand dollars a car out of California. I guarantee you that. So. If you were nine ten and you were getting like ten thousand there, ten thousand back, that makes more sense to me. Does that not make more sense to you too? You know, it's funny, yeah, because that when I when I just thought of you drive from let's say you drive from Connecticut to California and you got a stack uh, of cash ultimately when you get there and let's say it's all COD. And now you make a YouTube right. video where you're dumping money in the seats and you're high fiving and champagne and crystal. <laughs> right. And yeah. now you, and that's before you pay your bills. Now right. you pay your pay off your fuel card, pay pay your insurance, you all the food and the and the tolls and the you got nothing. I mean, really, I don't know how you have any money left. Right. I can see it, like I said, I Maybe can see grand. it more for all if that work. You were doing 10,000 there, 10,000 back. That's $20,000 that if you had a team of drivers, you should be able to do that in 10 days, right? But that's not how much they always get paid because you can't always find a $1,000 car, especially out of California going back. And, and, and here's the good question. Why are the rates less the further the distance? Yes, economies yeah. of scale, law of diminishing yeah. returns. What's going on here? Yep. Well, that's... they. <laughs> How do you say that? They just take because advantage of Because people, okay, this is where we get into <laughs> to false expectations. We live in a world yeah. full of false expectations. We just plain do. Yeah. So people think that, well, yeah. if you're able to drive farther without stopping, loading, and unloading, I should be able to pay you less. Right. And my cost didn't and really go think. down, though. No. Well, no, you know no. what? That's your problem because I want it my way, and I'm the customer, and I'm always right. So somewhere along the way, there's this idea, and it, you know, assuming you you were making bank, but you weren't making bank. You never were making bank in the beginning. Or maybe if you can get a good rate, because you're going to grow your business, you're going to stay in business, you're going to do a good job, stay educated, get a good night's sleep, whatever it is, you need some money to do that. Mm -hmm. But but we live. Right. You could. This is man. Don't get me started on the economy and the way this works. But we all want each other to have these razor thin profits assuming that we can mm -hmm. just get we can get like sky high volume to make up for our razor thin profits but it doesn't work that way in auto right. transport you can't haul a thousand no. cars a month you can't 
but no. somebody is. No. And that, that's why when we heard what yesterday, somebody said, post in the live chat, that Swift is loading Sprinter vans. Now, Swift is a dry freight van company nationwide, right. and Swift is right. known for right. having new drivers that crash all the time. I don't know how many Sprinter vans <laughs> were lost. Yes. But wait a minute, yeah. you're driving Sprinter vans into dry freight vans rather than hiring a professional auto transport company. Yeah, because we saved 50 bucks. Right, right. And I, that's why I always say that, honestly, a, a bigger car hauler ends up making the same as a three car as far as, and sometimes the three cars, four cars make more profit than them just because there's more expenses. I mean, you figure they have a hundred to $150,000 truck just alone, right? Mm -hmm. If you're buying new equipment, your trailer's probably another hundred thousand dollars minimum. So you've got probably $300,000 out there in just equipment without your insurance, without your expenses, without, you know, all this stuff. Whereas you can put a three car guy in what a 3,500 and three car wedge. You can count, probably get into that for, if you don't buy a brand new truck, right. shall we well, say, this is where yeah, I mean, exactly. you're still way under what they're. But you are, you are, as Ty will tell you, you are, uh, what's the best way to say this? You are wearing out your equipment within the year. Right. So, right. If you didn't well, set aside any money. I wouldn't say I'd say two. Yeah. Well, yeah. it depends on what, you know, whether we're talking about tires or yeah. Or the, or the, the wear well, and tear we were also the talking trailer. about whether you bought a Ford, a Dodge, or a Chevy, too. Exactly, <laughs> so there's a difference right? there. Too. It gets really interesting. So, I mean, most of my guys start out with a pickup truck. And they eventually, okay. yes, okay. go and buy a big rig. And they usually go from a three-car to a four or five. Um, I will say that if you don't get the right trailer when you go up to a four or five, you're not going to make much more money because if you go out and you started with a three car wedge and you go to a four car Kaufman or four car Appalachian, you cannot put just whatever you want on there. You have to fit the, it has to be the right fit. And so sometimes you're going to go with three. So then you're not really accomplishing anything either. So if you're going to go up to a four or five car, try to go get the flatbed style. I know they're more expensive. You're going to make more money. My four car last week, which and, you know, we haven't been making these super great rates like we have been, but my four car last week made $9,000 in a week's time. Wow. So that'll, that'll tell you. You're not going to make a there. YouTube video, are you? <laughs> that's, your, that's the video. No, my, my four money. car made $9,000. Because you know what will happen is that somebody will go back home and be like, well, shoot, if they made 9000 a week, I know we can make twelve grand a week because we're smarter than they are. <laughs> I know I get that a lot. And I'm just like, that's not how this works. One, he's established. Two, he can take some big ass shit. So like I can take two 2500s, a 3500 and a car. And those, those pay well, you know, and obviously we're also, the other reason why he makes more money than a lot of the other guys is I try to find packs. So he's not driving all over the place. He can go 900 miles in one day. Because, well, not, you know what I mean? He leaves that day and then he's there the next day. So we're loading and unloading repeatedly and, for the next day. And you, know you didn't what I mean? make so 9000 a week that. every week, right? Or did you? No, God, no. We His <laughs> exactly. average is like 6500 7000 but, but that's not a good YouTube video. Come on. <laughs> Nobody's going to. We're, that's not, we're not going to go viral <laughs> if we say we don't make 9000 every week. Right. Um, well, be, uh, and I think... <laughs> That's yeah. part of the problem too. When people first start this business and then they come to us as dispatchers and like, I want this, this, and this. And I'm like, if it's a perfect world, that would all happen, but it's not a perfect world. I don't know what you've been watching or who you've been looking at, but go look on central and tell me what you find on there because you ain't tell what you're telling me is not there. And it's not going to be there. Those are for the weeks when you've got like a bonus run. Like last week was a bonus run is the way I look at it during COVID. We were getting those kind of rates every week. But we're past that now. I mean, just to get the that, I thought that was excellent for, oh, for it what is. we did. I, I, and I'm so I mean? happy to hear that. It yeah. makes me feel, yeah. I feel good about it. Um, BM yeah. says, customers, dispatcher, and the likes think that because you haul six to ten vehicles, they can charge less. Yep. Specifically now, yep. especially now that fuel is cheaper. Um, is fuel cheaper? They will always give you an excuse reason for the pricing. Yeah, uh, that's why I always keep a toothpick handy. And yeah. the cards, because you you in, invariably you're going to get a phone call, 
not get a phone call. You're going to make a phone call, and you're going to get somebody on the phone, and they are the best poker player, and they're going to tell you about their boat <laughs> and their brother and all this crap, and then how you're doing yeah. them a favor, and I'll see you on the next one, buddy, and, you know, do me, you know, yeah. sweet old lady and all this garbage. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I agree. Um... And also, 1080 Phantom was talking about short mile, long dollar. That's what Ty calls it. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, that's exactly. what I believe in, too. Short that's mile, do. long dollar, way to go. And that's why California to Connecticut, yeah. that's a great story. Here's what we got a couple more. We got less than a half hour. Blind shipment. What do you want to say about blind yes. shipments? Okay, so I don't know if everybody realizes what a blind shipment is. You know what a blind shipment is, right, Jay? Okay, so thank you. All right, here's I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and guess. I'm live on camera, and I'm guessing... I think I think okay. I think this is what it is. Okay, a blind shipment is when, as a dispatcher or carrier, you book a load with a broker, and they say um, there are certain things we can't tell you. We're gonna right. We're gonna give you the address, and we also, it's not just that we don't want you to put some information on the BOL. Am I right? I'm close. Kind of. Okay. Go um, ahead. what they're more concerned about is is that they don't want you to let the the so you're always picking them up from dealerships just so you know so then you're always picking up a brand new vehicle and i'll tell you why here in a second and they don't want you to let the dealership know that you're picking up from where it's really going to you have to give them a bol that says it's going to i don't know just down the road when in all reality you're taking it to some place where there's a shipping warehouse and it's going overseas so what it is is technically what us transporting it is not illegal in any way shape or form what is illegal is this. There is a law that says that no car that's less than two years old can be shipped overseas or sold to anybody overseas. The, if a dealership does that, they get fined. I think it's like five grand or something. It's a lot of money if that car gets found out by the government that it's overseas. So as we all know, cars overseas are hard to come by. And you got your sheiks over there that want those Rolls Royces and BMWs and, and Mercedes Benz. You know what I mean? But they can't get them. So there are places out there and then, and see, I haven't heard of a blind shipment in about at least two years because this ring that was doing it got busted. But what they do is they buy a car here for like 50 grand. They'd send it overseas to wherever and charge them, you know, 70, $80,000. That's why it's illegal. So blind it's not illegal for ring us. Ring LLC. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Honey, we got the company name. But, <laughs> but what happens is like these people get on Craigslist and they say, Hey, I need you to buy a car for me. We'll, you know, we'll set you up in a business. We'll pay you $500 for every car you buy for us. We'll send you the money to go buy the car. You buy the car. And then we're going to have them pick it up from you or pick it up from the dealership under your name. And then we're going to ship it to, you know, LA or whatever and ship it overseas. It usually is Baltimore, but, um, they get these people and the people who end up getting in trouble are the people buying the cars for these I'm assuming mafia rings or something. Well, it's it's going to be something like that, right? What's that like when you get pulled over at the scale? No, I've never had anything happen. Really? Because they don't care. Because they don't. You, they've okay. actually literally purchased it. They don't care where it's going okay. to, as long as you have your. You the, know what I mean? They the don't bin, care where it's going. The VIN of the car yes. matches the VIN on your yes. BOL or whatever. Yep. And okay, so right on your way. The only time that we have gotten in trouble. On to Moscato, you trouble, go. Okay. Yes. Okay. We showed up to the dealership, then dealership had found out what was going on. And they wouldn't release the car. It's not on us, though. I mean, we're just doing our jobs. We're just transporting. But well, that's why it always works. That's why when you're in your car and they say, wait a minute, where's that going? You say, that's not mine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <Okay. laughs> so, works but yeah, every that's, time. What, that's what that is. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's I mean, blind shit. I you... Like I said, I haven't seen it in years. So, all right. So, so do, you, do you avoid blind shipments? Do you. Do you have anything special you do? do? You just do them. No, I always do them. You and do I follow whatever rules they want because they usually just pay well. Do what they say. Because they they want you to do it right. That's not mine. So I've always taken them. I mean, we did a lot of them for some reason. They got they had some in North Carolina going up to Jersey to the port on a regular basis. You don't deliver them to the port, though. That's the funny part. They have another person there that you deliver it to, and they <laughs> handle the port. Track. So you're, so that, that, that so was, you're looking I mean, for a guy. His name is Bobby, yeah. and he's got a red yes. hat. All right? Yeah, you're, you're driving Bobby off in the red. House and Bobby's handling it. Do you go to a warehouse? Do you go to a stop sign? I mean, where do you? We usually always drop them but... off at 
residences is what oh, we did. Okay. Like we would pick it up from a like dealership a or I I've had them literally like the guy went and purchased it in North Carolina, brought it to his house in North Carolina. We picked it up from him and then we took it up North. And then I've taken them to the port warehouses up in Newark, New Jersey before, and they don't care either. They're just moving their cars. So I, like I said, though, the, there was a huge ring of people that were doing it over in California a couple of years ago and they got, all got busted. And unfortunately, the people that got busted were not the people, the big wigs that are in another country managing this. It was all the individual people that they came across and shystered it into thinking that this was a real job and they were making real money. Right. The, doing this. The, 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 the head honcho, yeah. all he did is break his yeah. burner phone. He's like, well, we'll find another one. That's all good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hey, Silver Mint says, can you tell me which trailers have a cheap rate section so I can avoid buying that trailer? That's a really good question. Like, what trailers would you avoid? Like, if someone said, hey, I'm going to get this trailer, what what would be, I you would know? Tell you. Yeah. Okay, so, now, there's good things and bad things about a Kaufman, okay? If you get the Kaufman with the tandem axles, do it. The problem with the, with the Kaufmans, what we've had over the years, is literally your axles will dry up. Even if you're inspecting them and doing what you're supposed to do, they will dry up. I've had them catch on fire. I've had them burn down. Um, and the other part is you can't always find the parts for them. I used to have a guy that would carry them like a full axle with him all the time because when they go out, they freeze on to your whole thing. You can't do anything but pull the axle off and put a new axle on. Wow. Um, if you get the tandem axle, you automatically have that, that bath that's in there that makes sure that, you know, that's not, I mean, don't get me wrong. That's not a foolproof. You still need to be doing your inspections, but it is keeping it lubricated the whole time. So you're not going to have that happen as regularly as like, if you had the regular Kaufman. Now, if you get a Kaufman wedge three car, you're, it's like a normal three car. Okay. You can get the flip outs put on it. You can sometimes take four. Sometimes you can't. It just depends. You got to have to do your dimensions. Right. Now, if you go with the four car Kaufman, it is way better than the Appalachian. Appalachian uses the same axles, so you have the same problems. I believe, I don't want to put Dexter on the line, but they're Dexter axles. Yeah. Um, but the difference with, between the Appalachian and the Kaufman is the Kaufman upper deck is uh, wide, okay? As well as the lower deck. So you can put trucks on there and bigger SUVs like Tahoe, Suburbans, that kind of thing. On the Appalachian, one of the decks is narrower than the other. So you are limited as to where you can put uh, like a big vehicle or how many you could put on there. Um, so if you're doing it, I would go with the Kaufman. Now, if we're talking, now these are cheap. These are cheap ones. If you're getting into the business, this is what you do. That's what everybody does. They go and get Kaufmans. I would go, instead of getting a wedge, I would invest in getting a take three instead, which is a flatbed trailer. And you can have... Um, you can also do extensions on both ends. You can drive them with a pickup truck. You can put anything on those suckers. And that's the guy, like I've got a three car that has that and he makes, you know, anywhere between 5,000 to $7,000 a week. I've had to make over eight before because he can take those high roof vans wow. and he can take three of them. And, or you can take three pickup trucks if they're 1500s or take two 2500s and a car. So he's not limited as to what, he can do. I prefer the flatbeds just for that reason. And if you've noticed online, there's a lot of big stuff. They always pay better. Now, um, hey, Sue, on the flat, on that on that take three, is that a, a fifth wheel kingpin or is that a gooseneck? Um, I'd have no. to ask Danius to see. I know that can when that based on say. weight distribution, etc., that can be kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, I, I but I like where you're headed. I'd have to go look at his pictures. Yeah. Yeah, um, and you probably, I mean, the take three is down in Texas, I believe. Kaufman is out of North Carolina. I was talking to um, one of my uh, companies and he's gonna go buy a five car Kaufman. I kind of advised him against it because the problem with the five car Kaufman, like the four car, you can't always just, you gotta have the right combo. I was gonna to ask you, on there. The, is that the mini five? Yes, yeah. I don't like it, it's pretty horrible. Right, yeah, yeah the mini yeah. five. Yeah. And they're really hard to get five vehicles on. They really are. Um, oh, if you're going to do this for the long haul, you want to invest. I mean, I say this both ways. If you're trying to get in the business and you want to get going, then you buy a cheaper trailer. And then later on, you upgrade as you're making money, if that makes sense. Now, as far as upgraded trailers, you're going to, want to look at the Wally Mo's, the Sun Countries. Those are quality trailers that are you're not going to have the problems with. You are going to have with these cheaper ones fritz just said it right there he had a 
uh, Appalachian micro. Yeah. It's dangerous and cheap. And we sold it. Well, it, um, uh, and I knew I, a guy I mean, that had a Wally. Well, one, I had a guy that really complained about the um, the Wally Mo was too low. Really? But he complained about all kinds of stuff. So after a while, I didn't know what oh. to believe anymore. But um, yeah, yeah. What was the other one you See, said, Wally like Mo? And what was the other one? Mo. Or Sun Country. Sun, Sun Country is a good. Um, yeah, Sun Country is another awesome. one. Those are. And then I mean, really you've got well. higher grade ones like um, my guy that made the nine thousand dollars last week has a Infinity. They're very expensive. They're like into the fifty grand zone, is but a good right? Wally Mo is in the fifty grand zone. Okay. Too. Yeah. Mm. Infinity makes a really good trailer too. What theirs is, is a flatbed Two go at a slant. So you go, you know, the very first one goes up in the air. Then you put one underneath it. Then you put another one up in the air and then you put another one underneath it. And you can pretty much haul anything you want on those suckers. Right. Um, that actually, but that's expensive. a good. And so that does that have hydraulics, right? So you can maneuver. Yes. Right. Yeah. 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 And then, for example, me and John were talking about this the other day because he has a flatbed with one going up in the air. And I kept saying, I can't figure out why he can't fit this truck on the, the lift. Hmm. And it's because on the Infinity, when we were comparing the trailers, the Infinity has a well that you drive the cars up exactly. underneath. So you don't exactly. have to lift those trucks way yeah. so high up in the air. And yeah. that's that's the difference. Sun Country different. has that yeah. as well. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Where you're, you're actually going down. So you're increasing your height. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, it is, a, and, and really, I mean, it's it, what's amazing is, we, I mean, there could be a whole equipment show, um, which is something right. me and Brian. And I'll tell <laughs> yeah. you what, Sue, I'm impressed. I didn't know. I, I mean, I, shame on me for not knowing. You this. didn't know that I knew stuff. You, uh, I, 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 you are a wealth of knowledge. But I didn't. I mean, just hearing you speak about the trailers and those specifics, that is awesome. Because there are so well, many people dying for that intensity of knowledge, and instead they get yeah. you know ten thousand dollars being dumped yeah. in a seat, telling you you know this is what you make yep. your first day. It's crazy. It's crazy. Well, I mean, I've learned this over the years. The fifteen years you've dealt with a lot, and I've had drivers actually live in my area that I've, I myself with my husband have actually changed out axles on a trailer before wow. because they had a. You could Kaufman. So, wow. yes, I've done it. Wow, <laughs> so. that is amazing. Wow. Now, that sounds like a good YouTube video. Sue changes the <laughs> axle. It's been about 15 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, we got a couple more things. Okay, uh, okay. I can't say the company name, but you say you hate these guys. And you got a good story about them. This is from a couple weeks ago. And I don't oh. know. Yeah, what happened? Let me go find that. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. I know it's Hold been on, a while. <laughs> yeah, that's kind <laughs> of the last note I, I have. Drag my menu. Yeah, and then while we're in that, let's see. I oh, Fritz, I have a Featherlight aluminum tandem axles. BM, I had a '98 Orange Blossom, no longer made. It was a solid trailer. Interesting. That's great stuff, you guys. Thank you so much. We're we're got fifteen more minutes, and um, we're gonna see if Sue. I brought up this one. You need story. to jog my memory a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I know. Well, <laughs> it's it's blank um, a carrier, and um, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, we'll so we're gonna keep we're gonna keep moving on. I will say this though, um, in some respects, last week's show. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna set this down and, and step away slowly. Last week's show, I also was thinking maybe this is the best ways to eliminate dispatchers because if we make load boards impossible to use, and you just and you you're only really seeing good loads through notifications, that actually I, that's a believable science fiction alternative. Uh, so I already said too much. Okay, so do we have any more searches? We got about ten more minutes okay. left. Or any questions? If you've got a question, um, yeah, go ahead, Sue. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm trying to figure. I'm trying. I, that's a good story, and I'm trying to remember which who it was. I'm, I'm trying sure to find an is. email. <laughs> I'm sure it is. Well, it's from February 19th, so it's old. Okay, let me find that. I mean, yeah. Shoot, February 19th. February Isn't that 9th. before COVID? That's funny. Okay. Jay. Yeah. Here. <laughs> okay, that's a different one. February 19th. We just discussed that one. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, it was, I gotcha, now I know who it is. Okay, so 
Uh, we won't mention names, but yes, I don't like this this broker because their loads are <laughs> never good. So they gave us a load, and this I think this just happened like a couple weeks ago. Yeah, we got a load from this company. We um, they give it to us. They give us a phone number that does not work. After he's negotiated with me, by the way, uh, by twenty five dollars to take less, but I needed the car to get my driver out of there, so I did it. Anyways, and um, I get the load the next morning. We accept it. We call and call. The phone number's disconnected. I text this guy, and I'm like, because they're, they're a text company. And I'm like, the number you gave us is doesn't work. Won't answer me. So we call the main line to the broker, and they're like, well, we don't know what to do to help you right now. We'll get back to you. So we call the delivery because that's, you know, we're detectives. We're not just dispatchers. So we call the, the delivery end and say, hey, we're trying to get a hold of the pickup point do you have a phone number that works? And she's like, I don't know what you're talking about. And she just hangs up the phone on. No. Us. Well, apparently she's asleep. Yeah. She's like, I don't know what car you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. So we hang up the phone and I'm like, let's find another car. I'm not dealing with this because I know this broker and there's crap. This happens all the time. So, the, and, and during this time, I'm texting this person. They won't answer me. Probably no, wait, this is the you know pickup contact? Yeah, the pickup contact phone number was wrong. Okay. The delivery contact number, we call, she answers, and she's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't have no car. Wow. So yeah, I've had we're, that before. Yeah. we're trying to, we're dealing with the broker. I'm texting the broker that I'm talking to. She and my other dispatchers calling the main line. Nobody can do anything for us. So I'm like, screw it. We're canceling the slow. We're getting another car. So finally, two hours later, then, then the lady who was asleep apparently calls back and is like, Oh, I know what you're talking about now. I was asleep. I, I And this is what's going on. I'm like, I'm sorry. We've already moved on. My driver was already there in this area. Nothing was right. Blah, 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 blah. So then the broker, finally the texture guy who was texting me at nine o'clock the night before, but won't text me at eight o'clock in the morning, um, is going, why did you cancel the loan? I'm like, well, you gave us the wrong number. No, that's not the wrong number. I've already talked to him and texted him. I said, oh, really? You want to try it right now? And so he's like, I know I talked to him. I said, try it. The number's disconnected. So he gave us the wrong number and then blames us for leaving and cussing us out one way or the other because oh, we left the car. Wow. And I'm like, this isn't in our screw up. This is your screw up. You need to make sure you have the right information. And your lady at the other end is a total crazy lady because she told us it wasn't even her car. And... um. I said, there's nothing I can do about it. Right. And then he's like, why did you take the load? I'm like, really? I took the load because you're supposed to have the right information. I mean, you're the broker. You're supposed to have this all right. He goes, well, well the car's waiting for you to pick it up. I'm like, my driver's already left the area. Yeah, he was not nice. And, you know, I can't say so, who it is. If I did, no, you we'd can't. be in trouble. <laughs> well, that's what, which is so yeah. crazy because this is why I love that. It's a great story. It's so specific, too, because... I don't know how many people across the country have to live through this crap every day, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, every day. this happens a hundred times across the United States every day, uh -huh. probably minimum. Yep. We're, I, oh, yeah. It make, how is oh, it? Yeah. The, how is it? You book a load, man. My microphone, my audio is going crazy. How is it that you book a load, and then you make the phone calls? And this, this is pretty normal. We're yep. dealing with people that need to move vehicles, right? It's not yep. It's not yep. rocket science. And yet, no. you, you call people, they act all cagey, crazy, or, mm -hmm. or just missing yep. entirely, don't return. And then when they, yeah. when they finally do come back, I've had people like call me back and be like, oh, 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 yeah. Oh, oh, you're talking about that car that you're picking up in 10 minutes? Well, yeah. Wait, what, what do you yeah. really is this how you function in life yeah. how can you be so yeah. inept how yeah i i don't get it how i mean that's their job the I, way i look at it we how? have our job they have their job the transporter has their job well, and get dispatchers are always picking up the pieces i don't get it dispatchers it's are always, always it's, picking up the pieces exactly Hey, that's a good T-shirt. But yeah, I mean, nice. true. that's the way it goes. Ooh. Well, that's why I like the I like the idea of I said it before. I really like the idea. Uh, booking booking loads off load boards is like having puzzle pieces from a bunch of different puzzles, and you're supposed to put together a picture. Like yeah, you you're you're, you're a miracle work. You wake up in the morning and you're supposed to be a miracle worker every day. Yeah. 
it, it is well, unbelievable. And, and then, and then, you, and I, then, it, and I've it, noticed it's okay, it's getting okay, worse. <laughs> I mean, that's it, what it I literally always said. is getting worse. It, yeah. It get, so it gets worse to the point where, and that's where again, uh, if you if you're able to have that good week, you got somebody moaning and groaning about what they had to pay you. Like really? Right. Is it? Well, right. Right. Uh, I mean, honestly, when I have when I have guys like that, they usually I usually they're deleted eventually. <laughs> so I want somebody to appreciate what I do. And and it don't get me wrong, we go through lots of drivers. Just like when I have new dispatchers, we go through lots of drivers because either they know more than we do, which is usually what happens, and they're wrong, um, or they don't want to pay you for what you've done. And I don't deal well with that because I want to get paid just like anybody else. And like, they want to get paid. This is what we do. And, um, like, for example, we, we got rid of one, uh, about a month ago because he was a, constantly complaining oh, about everything driver. that he wanted to make more money. Yeah. Yeah. And he wanted more money. Wanted Gee, more I money, wonder where he got his false way. expectations. Hmm. Yeah. Well, that's the funny part is, you know, after he quit us, the, he would only tell us we could go certain routes and all this stuff. Okay, so that limits us too. So oh, no. then I can't get you premium money. Oh right? God, yeah, right. no, right, yeah. So no. it was that, and then on top of that, he said he wouldn't go certain places. And as soon as we give him his two weeks notice and stuff, next thing you know, he's going to those places he said he wouldn't go to, and getting less money and, than what we were getting him. That's as well. exactly oh, okay. like the broker. That you educate and tell them you're going to have to pay more. They repost it, but they certainly yeah. don't want you to have it because, well, then it would yeah. be clear that you educated yeah. them. And my goodness, that's not going to happen. Right. We are not going to be educated. No. no. <laughs> and, and I mean, that's and that's a lot of new drivers must be looking Thank on. You, I don't Brian. know what they're looking on or who they're talking to. And they're always thinking they're going to get way more money. Like when I get an application in and they say they want a dollar a mile per car, I call them up. And I'm like, are you for real? Oh, and here's like, a good yeah, one. Why? I here's heard a, you can make that. <laughs> here's a good one. BM is talking about I hope you charge them storage. I love that. So 1080 Phantom's talking about um they refused the vehicles at delivery but begged them to get picked up. Yeah, how about that whole mm -hmm. uh Yeah. I'm trying to think of yeah. a, I'm trying to think of a different phrase than circle jerk. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> I don't even know what to say when you said that one. <laughs> but, I mean, well, that's it's. Oh no, no, I'm sorry. It's called dispatching. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, I mean, I've and, and you talk about storage and that kind of stuff and not being able to deliver. I've yeah. literally gotten cars that we've taken home before. I mean, we actually owned them. Oh, right. Exactly. Fact. Sometimes you <laughs> so, own the car if you get lucky. You know, I want to say this yeah. is that we're almost yeah. done here and I want to thank everybody. And I want to say this is kind of cool. I did the repo. I had to riding the repo market on a Tuesday night a few weeks ago. And um, I, I tell you, I've been learning a lot more about repo. There's this, there's a podcast called Repo America with Patrick Altiz. Yeah, and Patrick Altiz is a podcaster who's okay. worked in repo. He's part of the uh, ARA. Mm -hmm. And that's right, Jay's talking about repo. And so you know what? Patrick asked me live on the show if I would put my repo hammer away. And I did. I retired. I don't have it anymore. I, I, I just have the gavel. I put the repo. Because you know what I learned? Repo, those re repo agencies get screwed just like auto transport businesses. Oh, yeah. These are two yeah. sets of company, two separate verticals living the same life, getting yeah. squeezed from the banks and the customer's mm -hmm. expectations. They're caught in the middle mm -hmm. and, and they got razor thin yep. margins and, and, you know, their patience is running out. Yep. And then you throw COVID on yeah. top. The whole thing is just, it's just a mess. So um, I, I really hope that moving forward, we can be one of the beacons of light to try to help bring together auto transport and repo. Because as you and I both know, we see those inoperable vehicles. And what, what do mm -hmm. we, what's, the, what's the first thing you think when you see an in-op on the load board? It's at a repo yard and it has no keys. <laughs> exactly. Unless it's a pass. place I know. I'm like, pass. Skip yeah. it. I don't pass. want it. Yep. I do not want yep. it. And nope. They don't pay enough. They don't pay and enough. And they usually don't have keys. 
And yeah. it's not the repo yeah, agency's I mean, fault in a lot of these. But we call, they only have a two hour window a week. And you know why that is? Because uh -huh. they're squeezed too. So, um, yeah. so anyways, there's yeah. my, uh, uh, there is my, um, I don't know. Repo, um, mantra. I don't know. <laughs> right. Right. I was trying to, exactly. I, was, I mean, it's not, I was, like, a, right, it's ode, not like lizard lick towing, man. My ode to a repo. <laughs> Right, my oh, my repo I, hey, soliloquy. Tell you? How about that? So, yeah, what were we gonna say? You know, do you ever remember, remember watching Lizard Lick Towing? That show. Oh, is that show? one of those <laughs> reality shows? Because he was a repo. Oh, uh, did, did I ever tell you John uh, actually went over there and met them? Oh wow, where are they? <laughs> He went over there. You know how John is. He has to stop every place and do oh, all that yeah. stuff. Oh yeah, John is. Else. You see John coming in his in his butcher's apron, yeah. and you're like, uh oh. Yeah, because well, and I mean, if you guys follow if, if follow Paladin Enterprises, he will show you everything he's ever passed, touched, and I mean, it's actually fascinating. He tells me more stories than I've ever heard in my entire life about KFC, who, who created this and everything else. He's a what I would consider like almost a history buff, so he knows everything that you've ever wanted to know about. <laughs> so, well, he does, and actually, it is amazing. John does an amazing job of entertaining, documenting, blogging, yes. etc. Yep. And the guy works really hard. I don't know how he does it all. Oh, yeah. He has so, so many companies, it's not even funny. I don't know how right. he does He's, it either. Plus a lot of kids. <laughs> I, and, well, and I was thinking, yeah, the, well, the magic show business, he's not doing that right now, probably. No, right? he hasn't been able to. And then the candy uh, bars. Since COVID. Right? Yep, he's yeah. doing Easter candy right now. Yeah, yep. oh, okay. But he's yeah. on the road so, this week. And then well, he, he's got to be like Easter candy next you week. You know, Things are going to open back up a little bit, which is actually a great way to end this show, yeah. right? It's March. It's 2021. Yeah. The sun yeah. is shining. Hey, this is how we started the show. The sun is shining. It's getting warmer. Yeah. And you, you may not have yeah. to triple mask much longer. Really, Jay? You had to bring up the triple mask I'm again? I'm hoping Missouri will... We'll stop it, but we'll see. Well, it's not Missouri. <laughs> it's the cities that are doing Missouri, right? Yeah. Well... It's, it's not Missouri itself. So. You know, I... I here, ultimately, I don't know why I still do it, but I read news headlines every day. Don't do that, man. Yeah, they don't depressing. share good news anymore. <laughs> there is maybe no, that's why I'm such no. a pessimist. I don't know. No, it's not. Yeah. I was born this way, baby. I was born this way, <laughs> and but but you can't stop car haulers. We talk about that too. Ty talks about that too. You can't stop car dealers and you can't stop car haulers. And that's why we're here. Yeah. We're trying to throw down the real truth, share information, and, and we're trying to arm you up and send you back out to the front line. That's our goal on, on yeah. Dispatching Live. So yeah. hopefully we've been helpful. Sue, thank you so much for your time again today. No problem. No problem. And I'm everybody, always here to help. Everybody that joined the live chat ask questions love that if you yeah. miss the show live go ahead you can put it in the youtube comments below and um oh and don't forget you can go to autotransportintel.com click on sign up and you can we'll get, put you in touch with ty or whatever you've got whatever you're looking for we want to try to help we're here and um and that's it it's a 90 minute show it goes pretty fast, actually. It's that's pretty yeah, fast for ninety minutes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Or it seems that way to us. It might not be <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> we got people just. <laughs> Are you ever gonna get done? <laughs> right. Oh my god, these guys—they <laughs> don't stop. Why am I still tuned in? Somebody's saying. Um, I'm trying to think of on the uh, on those. Um, conspiracy movies they got that leg device and the guy tightens the leg device and you know so anyways if you're if you're at home torturing you're increasing your torture rack i can't come up with a thing what's that leg device what's that? Uh. <laughs> it's, a, it's a torture device for your leg and it's on those tom hanks movies where he's running around france trying to solve uh the mystery of uh Anyways, if you haven't, put it in the live chat. <laughs> put it in the comments below. Let me know. And if you've got a, something we got to share, uh, like if you've got a story that we need to touch upon or whatever it is, let me know because um, there is so much to talk about. So on that note, okay, I've worn out my yeah. welcome. Thanks, everybody. Stay safe and join us for tomorrow. We yes. Hey, tomorrow, Cars on the Move. 
We're going to be talking equipment tomorrow on Cars on the Move. We've got a uh, a trailer, some kind of trailer group out of Colorado wow. or something. So um, cool. if, you get, if you get the chance, yeah, tune in and say hello. And that's happening at noon, okay. Cars on the Move, Friday Central Time. Otherwise, we're back. You know what we're doing Tuesday night? Carrier Dealer Remarketer. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're going to be, uh, yeah, we're talking about the intersection of, you know, we always like to talk about where carriers meet dealers at the auction. Well, we're adding another layer, the remarketing layer, the reconditioning layer, because if, if you don't already know, uh, since there's a shortage of new cars and a shortage of chips, used cars have been on the upswing and actually the prices that dealers are paying at auctions for used cars has gone way up. Because of inventory, I don't know, there's still a high demand for uh, lightly used vehicles, so the prices have gone up. Mm-hmm. So with all that, yeah. older cars that would otherwise not have been as valuable are more valuable, but they still need a lot of work. And guess what? The transporter plays a big part in that value chain for the dealer buying older vehicles at auctions. Yeah. That includes trade-ins. Yeah, that includes, you know, yeah. a lo- lots of ways that auctions acquire or dealers acquire older vehicles. In fact, which includes, um, there is now a surge in dealers acquiring uh, heavily used vehicles from customers from their homes, from their driveways. There's new business models on this. So there's, there's a lot to talk about. So Carrier, Dealer, Remarketer Tuesday night. This is going to be an awesome show. We got a we got a panel. We have a pro panel. We got Paul Machine at Black Book, Michelle from Park My Fleet, uh, Tim from Max Digital, Robbie from LMR Companies, and then me and Ty. So it's going to be an amazing show. So there you go. You had to wait 90 minutes to get some actual like intense information. But it was worth the wait. So thank you so much for your patience. <laughs> oh, I'm so I'm so glad we have some fun here. All right, thanks everybody for tuning in. Stay safe, and we'll see you soon. Peace out, everybody. Again?